So heads of companies are admitting that Marvel and DC are falling apart. An entire industry is spiraling down the tubes. And you know who they blame that on? If you guess themselves and their anti-consumer rhetoric, oh, you would be mistaken. They always find a way to point the finger away. They always find someone else to blame. Yep, somehow, in some way, it's probably going to lead back to you. Oh, head wall. Wall head. Nice knowing you there, right? Oh, I swear. So hey there to all you fine folks on this fine day, by the way. Now this conversation that we're looking at, it comes from one Eric Larson. Eric Larson is the chief financial officer of the CFO of Image Comics. We're talking about one of their top brass here, and he's claiming the DC and Marvel comic bosses, they may just shut down new comic production altogether. Why? Well, again, it's your fault. Now, Larson, he's going to get into a conversation we'll look at in detail in just a second about DC, about Marvel, really about Image, too, floundering, trying to stay alive, and he's going to point the finger at somebody. And like I said, they're not going to point it internally. Oh, no, they're going to point it at consumers. They said they didn't need. Before we look at that, though, Marvel, DC, CFO of Image Comics, they should be absolutely embarrassed by what they're saying. They engage in predatory practice. They have driven away consumers. Now they're saying, well, there's no money to be made. Why? Because of you folks over there. Meanwhile, you have manga. You look at these charts here. This is for April 2021. You don't see any Western books whatsoever in the top 20 adult graphic novels. See, if they were really honest about the problems they're experiencing, they would look at comics like this. This is from Valiant on Free Comic Book Day. Cover, it looks nice, right? When you get into the interior, again, this is future advertisement. Would you spend anywhere from 4 to $10 with this? Most Most people, they would emphatically say no. Moreover, you see ego and petty narcissism. Here's Mark Wade, for example, telling you what he thinks about blockchains or blog bots. This is blocking hundreds of thousands of potential consumers. Quote, yes, chains or bots sometimes result in unfair situations where a genuinely civil fan can no longer follow a creator on social media, but that was a privilege to begin with, not a God-given right. You know what else is a privilege? Getting into my wallet. Mm, can you feel it stay Shut. Now, Eric Larson is a big problem, too. Why? Because he is management in a company. People follow his lead. And look at conversations like this. You call people who aren't Yahtzees, Yahtzees, so why not this guy? Hey, name one person I've ever called a Yahtzee. I'm not asking for a list, but you've accused me of something. I'd like to see you back that claim up. Oopsie, here comes bounding into comics with a receipt saying, Industry Insider, Eric J. Larson and Jim Gibbons declare no work for Yahtzees, but who are they talking about really? Here's a hint, by the way. They're talking about anyone they don't like. They're going to drive them out, and they did the same thing to consumer. In fact, when consumers have problem with image, well, they're not their consumers. Quote, the difference is that all but a handful of fans that are even aware of this flap, it isn't filtered down to actual readers. The scant few letters image received made it obvious that these weren't image readers anyhow. Basically, if you have a problem with what we do, we will just dismiss you out of sight. I know I was involved in that issue. By the way, it was about creators in their company denigrating consumers. I wrote about it because it was such a big issue. And this guy here says, most people, they don't know about it. Basically, you don't matter. Your money's not welcome. Cool. Not getting it then. Now, Larson, he isn't the only management personnel doing this. This is an industry-wide problem. And after Marvel, DC, IDW, their management denigrates, then their rank and file, they start to do the same thing. Quality diminishes. People, they walked away. Now they're seeing the money missing. It's really hitting them in the pocket. So they have to create this boogeyman. And you know what their boogeyman is? It's piracy. Why? Because they can point the finger again. They can say this is the reason we're going down. So when Marvel, DC, Image, and On collapse, it wasn't their fault. Quote, on the piracy debate, by the way, there was no debate. He created this debate. There is no debate. It's criminal behavior. People
people are struggling to make a living, and you're taking what they're creating without giving them compensation. There is no justification. Now, here's a question, by the way. Image Comics takes a flat fee from everyone. The rest is your money. So, if Eric Larson is picking fights with the consumers, who's really taking away money? Is it piracy, or is it that guy? Hmm, riddle of the Sphinx, right? I know. Now, Larson's self-indulgent pity party, it's going to turn to Marvel and DC when people start talking about predatory practices. What's beautiful about this, too, is that Larson, he's going to turn this into, well, they're hurting out there. They're floundering and they're failing. They're threatening to go to all reprints and stop producing new material. So, if you want to help out, well, nobody needs to take material from them. They don't need to change their mentality. They didn't bring this on. Oh, no, it's consumers, consumers that are somehow doing it. Now, the way that we get there is so nasty, too, because this, it's an innocuous, imaginary question. You have a guy come in. He asks about predatory, bloated cross titles, blatant cash grab stories coming from Marvel, and he mentions X of Swords. That added 22 extra comics, 100 plus dollars over three months. And he's like, how can a kid afford this? What do you say about that? Now, Larson, instead of saying, yeah, you know, that's a problem. Maybe that's how we get here. This and other things. He's like, that's, there's nothing about that that entitles you to own it. If that's too expensive, just don't buy it. Again, you just lost that consumer. Congratulations. Instead of having their money, they walk away. They take that disappointment to their friends too. Yeah, congratulations indeed, Eric. Then you have this person, again, bring up a very good point with that, saying it's less a problem of entitlement and more of a problem of corporate assumption that all consumers are able to withstand that rate of content. Imagine a landlord giving notice that the next two months you have to pay them seven times as much as usual to keep your apartment. The difference, by the way, in that is that you don't eat your comics. You could, I guess, but man, you eat some of those Marvel offerings. Ugh, just don't do it. Don't do it at all. And you don't live under comics either. Landlord might get you sometimes, have a good ironclad contract, but Marvel, you don't need them. That's when all of this threat comes in. You have the companies, they're floundering and failing. How did they get there? Well, they got there from what his original question was, but hey, let's ignore that. Let's ignore the way that they denigrate consumers and the quality drop-off. They're threatening to go to all reprints, to stop producing new material. Maybe they should, by the way, because the new material is horrible from Marvel. They're doing everything they can to survive. If they can't afford it, then do without. That, like I said, that's how you got here. They're also, they're not doing everything they can to survive. If they were, people like this in other places in management, they wouldn't run their mouths like this. You wouldn't have them driving away consumers, treating them like trash. But hey, what do I know? I was just one of those people spending a hundred plus dollars a week. And you know what? Now they get nothing. Marvel gets nothing. And that, that was their fault. 